Welcome to Opalas TV. Today I'm in Johannesburg in South Africa, together with Jean-Pierre Fester. He is a portfolio manager at Fairtree Capital, where he is running a very interesting strategy we are going to hear more about. But before we talk about the fund, let's hear about the man, about Jean-Pierre. Please tell us more about your background and your strategy. So Matthias, I've got a financial background. I'm a chartered accountant, chartered financial analyst and chartered alternative investment analyst. And I worked as an analyst at South Africa's largest hedge fund for more than six years. But most recently, I left them and joined Fairtree Capital, uh, setting up a new fund, a quantum mental fund at Fairtree Capital called the Fairtree Protea Strategy. And it's a fund that combines both fundamental analysis with quantitative analysis. It's an approach that I got to after reading about all the investment greats, whether it's Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, Benjamin Graham, David Graham, Seth Klarman, uh, but I also read about more quantitative inclined investors, uh, Jim Simons for instance, Cliff Asnes, and I told myself uh, why just stick to just a fundamental uh, bottom-up basis or on the other extreme, why just do a quantitative basis? Isn't there a good outcome to combine both these approaches towards investments? And I've used this approach the last decade or longer on a friends and family fund that I've been running, generated very good returns, and me joining Fairtree was an opportunity now to put it in a regulated fund structure, which the whole South African industry is at the forefront of in terms of creating regulated fund structures for hedge funds to be marketed to the public. And now we're ready from this year forward to roll this out as a product for the market. So to go into a bit more detail about the approach, I first do a lot of fundamental bottom-up analysis. Most of my day is spent sitting, reading, thinking, whether it's newspapers or industry reports, buy-side reports from our team of analysts at Fairtree Capital, sell-side reports from the market, annual reports from the company, industry reports. I sit and I read. That's mostly what I do. I also meet management teams. I think it's important to meet the people involved, the cattle allocators, how good are they, do we have a focus on shareholder returns, what type of people are they and uh, are they following the right strategies. I also then combine that with a more quantitative approach where I've automated the number crunching part of the investment process. What I have done is develop certain algorithms which I run on each individual line item of financial statements of any company and that gives me a best probability estimate of what the financial statements might look like in the future, next year, the year thereafter, and the year thereafter. So it's algorithms, both momentum and revision to the mean algorithms to forecast, for instance, sales, different elements of costs, depreciation, tax. And that is my starting point, my best probability estimate that I then use common sense to say that might be the most probable outcome of what the financial statements might look like in future, but should it be adjusted using some common sense. That then gives me a financial statements of the future that I need to translate into value. And I use a derivation of the Gordon Growth model and the DuPont model by looking at uh, asset turn, a debt to equity ratio, margin. By combining those, I can translate financial statements into value. Then what I do next is I take these points of value for the next few years and I do it historically as well and create a graph. So I've got a graph of historical value of the company and my future expected value of the company and I superimpose the price of the company on that. And generally what you see is a very strong fit. Price and value generally follow each other. But every now and then they diverge. Either on the upside where price pulls away and you have a classical bubble or on the downside where for some reason the share price gets very cheap and gets sold down. Those are the opportunities for a hedge fund manager to either short the shares in bubble territory or buy the shares in value territory. And my approach of this quantitative way of analyzing companies allows me to run it on multiple companies, all companies listed on a local stock exchange, the JSE, and have this breadth of analysis together with depth of analysis to see what opportunities are there in the market to go long the companies that are particularly cheap and short the companies that might be in bubble territory. 
So uh, these algorithms have been developed over the last decade or so. They have worked in the South African market. And I'm also looking forward to internationalizing this approach with the recent structure we set up in the Cayman Islands to make it applicable to global shares. I have done that already to a certain extent this year. Just after Brexit, I ran my model on UK shares and it threw up a lot of opportunities at the top of the ranking table of UK exporters, uh, which I then bought and it did quite well uh, just after Brexit. So I'm excited of what the model has done in South Africa, as well as what it might do on a global stock basis. So Jean-Pierre, tell me more about Fairtree Capital, your new home, and also how do you fit into Fairtree? Fairtree Capital was started in 2003, and today is an established hedge fund and long-only manager in South Africa. Fairtree Capital has around 30 billion rand of assets under management as at November 2016, with investors or clients both from South Africa in the community here as well as internationally. Uh, for instance, the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund or Norges is a, is a big client of Fairtree Capital. And uh, since 2003, Fairtree's uh, business model has developed into creating specialist teams that focus on their specific mandate. So I focus on equity long short as an example. We have other teams in Fairtree Capital that focus on commodity markets, volatility arbitrage, fixed income markets, private equity. So it's a business that spans the whole breadth of investment opportunities in the hedge fund and long only space. But within that, you have specialist teams focusing on their niche. And those get also packaged into two multi-strategy funds that investors can invest with, with Fairtree Capital. Most of the funds at Fairtree Capital are closed at the moment with very good returns those fund managers have decided not to take in any more money. Uh, Fairtree Protea, the fund that I manage, is still open with investors, seeing that we launched recently. And the multi-strategy funds are also still open for third-party investments. Twenty sixteen has indeed been a difficult year for the H fund industry, with very low returns from a lot of managers, significant negative returns from certain asset managers, and a specific focus on fees. So I do think the industry is going through a bit of a, a washout, a bit of a crisis, and to a certain extent, it might be good to say, well, what should hedge funds actually do? Uh, we know that there will be pressure on fees, so that the outcomes will be more fair. Uh, maybe more focus on performance fees rather than management fees. At Fairtree Protea, for instance, we offer a founder's fee class with 0% management fees for investors who come in early because investors currently have got this focus on fees. On returns, uh, it does once again show this year the focus on risk management, where a good hedge fund manager should really focus on the downside and protect capital when markets are very difficult, as they have been. So this year tested hedge fund managers and you can see the difference between those managers that have good risk management processes, use derivatives or other structures to protect value when prices move sharply in the case of a Brexit or a Trump presidency announcement versus those who just uh, went for big returns without focusing on risk and generated significant losses. So what we once again do at Fairtree Protea is uh, use put option protection so that when you do get significant price movements shocks to the system, the put protection assists in protecting capital because that is what a hedge fund manager should do. Uh, give you a reasonable return in the good days but also protect your capital in the bad days and the industry is being tested on that in 2016. So regarding an investment philosophy, I would say that I would try to be philosophical about things but not dogmatic and quite often in investments a philosophy becomes a dogma and a year like 2016 has shown that things change and the opposite happens to what a lot of people expect whether it's commodity prices that reach the bottom and turned around very sharply uh, interest rates with, which might be turning currency movements and if you are so stuck in a certain way of making money a certain philosophy that philosophy can turn into a dogma and become a risk to managing money. So basically what we've seen this year is that 
uh, investment philosophy should not become dogma. And that is where human bias comes in. If one reads Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman's work, it's very clear that humans fall into the same trap over and over again. And by using computing power, you can avoid your investment philosophy becoming a dogma by having the objective influence of computing power assisting you with the human judgment and the human decision making, which I think never can be replaced by computers. So it's the best to combine both rather than just use the human brain or just computing power. So you launched the fund in June. How has the strategy been doing since then? So having launched in June, it means the strategy has only been in a regulated fund for less than six months now. And it has been relatively flat against a market that's been slightly down. So still better than the market, but not substantially so. It is an investment strategy, not a trading strategy. So I expect the real returns and the real difference between what the fund has generated and the general market to only come through in at least one year's time, if not longer. I would also say that even though the strategy has only been in a regulated fund since June 2016 and have been running money on this basis for about seven years in a friends and family partnership, an unregulated vehicle. And in that vehicle, the returns have been in the mid-20s, around 25% uh, versus a market in general that has returned less than 20% per annum. So market beating returns historically over the, over the last seven to eight years in an unregulated structure and so far in the first six months, also slightly better than, in, than the market in a regulated structure. So Jean-Pierre, you have just started your fund. I wonder what's your outlook regarding the strategy and regarding the investment opportunities that you see? So the JSE All Share Index has been just about flat for two years now. My model did alert me about two years ago to say that valuations did look full, very low expected returns from that point forward, which has happened where returns have been flat over the last two years. At the moment, the model indicates there are certain opportunities for shares that do look cheap. But remember, that is why I'm using computing power to take away the traditional human way of trying to forecast markets and thinking we can forecast when, in my opinion, the, the future is inherently uncertain. So I do believe that the future is inherently uncertain and the quantum mental approach assists with that by using objective computing power to work out probabilities implied in share prices and know what is being mispriced at the moment. The way my portfolio is structured right now is a sort of butterfly strategy where I've got significant long exposure to benefit from markets doing quite well from this point, but also significant put option protection to make sure that the portfolio is protected if we have a sharp reversal in markets. Because it does seem at the moment that things are more uncertain than what they were historically.